Driving around western North Dakota, you get the sense there are big changes happening to the electrical grid. These rural areas are crisscrossed with power lines. And everywhere you look, more are going up. Colin Trebus is a lineman for Watford Underground, an electrical contractor out of the oil field town of Watford City. He says the rural character of the area has totally changed. Oh yeah, like especially from when I was out here, I mean, it's completely different. None of this transmission line was here. I mean, everywhere you look, there's power lines. It's crazy. The Bakken oil field is what is driving the construction of all those new power lines. Each oil well uses as much electricity as three to four homes. In just five years, over 7,500 of them were drilled in the Bakken. That's like adding 30,000 houses to one of the least populated parts of the country. Oil wells are actually some of the least power intensive parts of the oil field, says Jason Iverson of Montreal Williams Electric Cooperative. They're a utility based in the heart of the Bakken oil field. Things like this gas compressor station use way more power than a single oil well. I would say that the power that's being used at this site alone is probably close to some of your smaller towns in North Dakota. Small North Dakota towns and rural homesteads. That's pretty much the only type of customer the electric cooperative served before the boom got started. Now it sells almost exclusively to oil companies, which use way more power than farmers. In 2007, Montreal Williams sold just over 270,000 megawatts of power. By 2014, it was over 2 million. Iverson says that kind of change takes some getting used to. I, I guess I think it changed the most in that all of a sudden we're dealing with a lot of different oil companies and we don't really know who they are because before we, we basically knew who we were providing power to. It was our neighbor or it was someone we'd seen at a ball game or at church or wherever. And so we probably knew them by name. We knew where they lived. And, if they had a power request, we'd drive out to their place and ask what they needed and try to provide it for them the best we could. Here is Tioga. So you can see each one of these are substations. Overseeing this transition from tiny rural electric cooperative to bustling industrial utility is Dale Haugen, the general manager of Montreal Williams Electric Cooperative. He says there's more behind the growth in electricity demand than oil wells and gas plants. It takes housing for people, it takes the crew camps, it takes um, all of the support industries and, and just apartments, apartments, apartments. I mean, we needed a workforce like you wouldn't believe to move into this region and that all requires electricity. Oil patch towns like Watford City have more than doubled in four years. And that's probably an underestimate because so many people are sharing homes and trailers. It was pretty clear that local utilities were going to need more power. But as a small rural electric cooperative, Montreal Williams just delivers the electricity. It doesn't own the power plants. It needed to buy more power from the utility that does, Basin Electric Power Cooperative. It's a big utility with 3 million customers in nine states. And in order to meet the power demands in the Bakken, they were going to need 1,500 megawatts of new power in 10 years. That's like two new coal-fired power plants just for the oil field. But first, Basin had to make sure the oil development and the increased demand for electricity were going to last. After all, this part of North Dakota had been through booms and busts before. So every one of these represent a five and a half megawatt generating unit. Steve Tomac explains. And as utilities, we're very concerned about overbuilding because the worst thing that we can do is overbuild and have excess generation that our member owners have to pay for and we've got no ability to recover those costs. Once they were convinced that this new demand was here to stay, they developed a three-pronged approach to meet it. First, they bought power from neighboring utilities that had extra. Second, they moved it into the area on new transmission lines. And third, they got started on their own new power plants, ones that run off natural gas produced in the Bakken. The fact that this plant runs on natural gas is actually a big deal. 
Most of Basin Electric's power plants run on coal. But under the Obama administration's new clean power plan, they'll probably have to switch to cleaner fuels. So what they're doing in the Bakken is a preview of what's to come. The new transmission lines, power plants, substations, all this adds up to a highly modern grid that can provide more power and is less prone to outages. That's one of the east-west routes that we're putting in to move traffic east-west across the Gene Veter is the director of economic development for McKenzie County. We're so, such a uh, remote area that there's not enough customers here to support a massive electrical uh, build-out, but the oil industry can do that. And consequently, rural customers get better power for and keep their rates down. Even with low oil prices, electricity demand is still increasing, although not as fast as before. So utilities are still playing catch up. They probably will be for a while. In the next 20 years or so, companies hope to drill another 50,000 wells in the Bakken. For Inside Energy, I'm Emily Guerin.